In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change daytime into a beautiful sunset scene. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. Today I'm going to show you how to take a photograph from during the day and turn it into a beautiful uh, sunset picture. So we've got two pictures here. We've got this shot and we've got this one of the sunset. Now if you wonder where to get these photos from to practice or, or to use, check out Adobe Stock. Um, you can use the watermark versions for reference photos or for practice photos and then if you decide later on that you want to use them in your work, you can license them and then the watermark gets removed. I've got a link for you for 10 free images underneath. So let's continue. So there's no need to license the second image because all I want to do is grab the color palette and I'm going to apply it to this other photograph here. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go back in here and what I want to do is I want to select just this area of this particular color. So I'm going to go into the rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to select around here and this is going to select this kind of yellow and orange color. Now I could just grab the eyedropper but I want kind of a overall average of this color. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our image and now we're going to go under image adjustments and then we're going to go to match color. So using match color, we can take the colors from one photograph to another. It could be a different layer or it could be a different document. So if we look at it here under source, we're just going to change this and we can see these are the open documents we've got here. Click on it. You can see there's an image there. Right now the colors are looking kind of a little bit weird, but if we choose here selection, now what it's going to do is it's going to take the colors just from the selection and not the whole photo. Now we can choose fade and we can completely remove it or just add a little bit. So let's just bring it in, dial it in just a little bit. It's looking good. We could play around with the luminance if we want to make it a little darker or we can make it lighter. And of course the color intensity is just basically, it's a saturation for that new color. So let's give that a little boost. Click OK. All right, so we've got a little bit more work that we need to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to select our subject here. So I'm just going to click here on a quick selection tool. And if you're using CC 2018, we can just go under Select Subject and the AI is actually going to look and determine there's a person there and make a selection around them. Yeah, the selection is not perfect, but that's a good start. So I'm just going to grab my Quick Select, hold down the Alt or the Option key, and we're just going to refine that just a little bit. And just tap there. Great. So let's just click on Select a Mask. Just give a little bit of radius there just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And now we're just going to output this to a new layer with a layer mask and click OK. Excellent. And the reason I'm doing that, what happens is when we create this sunset, we're going to have a lot of backlighting here, which means that our foreground subject is actually going to be in a little bit more shadow than it is right now. So that's going to enable us to do that later on. So we'll come back to that. Now, what I want to do is create a nice sun ray. So we're going to create a new layer here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the line tool. This is my little technique that I came up with, which just seems to work really well. So we're going to change this to pixels. Make sure it's not on paths or shapes because we don't want a vector. We want to have um, just regular pixels. And let's make it just 35. We're going to make it quite big. Great. Now I want to taper these ends. And the way to do that is to choose filter blur. And we're going to use a motion blur and make sure that that motion blur is set to zero. Hold down the shift key, it makes it easy to go 15 degree increments. And notice how that tapers the end. Now this is a technique I've been using for a lot of years for a number of things. And we can see we've got that, we just want to soften it. We're going to choose a filter blur, a Gaussian blur. And see how that's just creating this nice kind of light ray there that's tapered on both ends. So we'll go here. And now what I want to do is I want to turn this into a starburst. So we're going to hit Control J for copy. And notice we've got a new copy of it there. And then Control T. Now remember if you're on Mac, it's Command instead of Control. And I'm going to hold the Shift key and drag this all the way around. So right now we've got this kind of a cross. I want to merge these two layers. So just select both layers. Hit Control or Command E. Now we're going to copy it again. Control or Command J. Control, Command, T for free transform. 
and we're going to just kind of pull that around. I think you get the general idea. So let's go again. We're just going to merge that. Control E, Control J to copy it, Control T. And what we're doing is we're bringing out another copy of everything. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel the whole time. And I'm just going to move that around till it sort of looks about right. I'm going to select that again, Control E, merge it all together. Now I'm going to hit Control T once again for free transform. And I'm just going to drop this down a little bit, just so it fits within the screen for now. You don't really have to worry about this pixelating because, you know, what we're going to do with it, it won't matter. So what we're going to do is choose a filter. We're going to give it a blur. And I'm going to give it another, just a little bit of a Gaussian blur here for a bit, just to soften the edges. There we go. That's looking good. And now I'm going to reshape this. So I'm going to hit Control T again once more. And I'm just going to kind of flatten it out a little bit, drag it up into the corner. And I'm just going to hold the Shift key and drag this down, make it much bigger. There we go. And then what we're doing is we're just kind of adding these light rays in. Now, if they're a little much, you can take the opacity down just like that. And so you can kind of dial it in however you want it. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of color. So we're just going to create a new layer once again. And I'm going to put this layer underneath our starburst. And then we're going to grab a nice kind of a golden color. Kind of about there. Looks good. And then we're going to grab our gradient tool. Foreground to transparent is the second option. And I'm just going to shrink our document down a little bit because I'm going to start painting over here and just kind of drag it out like that. And what it's doing is it's adding a little bit of that color over there. So I'm going to change the blend mode of this into something that's going to work better for this, something like a soft light, hard light. One of these will work well. Maybe the hard light looks good. Or we could try the soft light. Of course, there's other things, vivid light, all of these different light ones work. So try them and see which one looks best for your image. Right now, I'm going to use hard light. So we're starting to get there as far as our effect. Now, we've got a little bit more we need to do. And the next thing I want to do now is I want to kind of just give this, uh, the lady here on top, I'm going to give her a little boost of contrast. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a curves adjustment layer. So let's just go under the curves here. And I want to make sure it affects just that layer. Because if I adjust these curves now, notice how it affects the whole thing. I just want to affect this layer, not both of them. Hold the Alt or the Option key. And then when I do that, notice now it's only affecting the layer with our lady on it. Great. So what we want to do now is I'm going to just kind of push this down a little bit. And we want to really add some contrast in here. I want to add a lot of contrast. So when you're backlit, we're going to see you're going to become a little bit of a, a silhouette. So we're just kind of dropping that down a little bit as far as the contrast. And I'm going to add another adjustment layer here, hue saturation. And let's clip that one in there. I just click there. Also, this little button here will do the same thing. So just to fix that layer. Now we're going to reduce the saturation a bit. There we go. We can pull that lightness down a little bit more. And let's play around with the hue just a touch. There we go. So that's starting to look good. Now, the only thing is on these edges, these facing edges, we would be seeing some light. So why don't we fix that right now? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all three of these layers and just hit Control G to put them into a group. And then I'm going to create a mask. And now we're going to mask around those edges. So if we go open and I hit the Control or Command key and click, Notice now it selects her. So what I want to do is I want to contract that selection. So we're going to choose to select, modify, contract. And if we contract this by about 20, we'll see how that looks. 20 is not bad. And let's soften it so we're going to feather it. So we're going to choose to select, modify, feather. And we'll give this about a 10 pixel feather. So what we want to do now is we want to paint around these edges and just get a little bit of rim coming from there. But right now, notice we've got everything there selected and not the edges. So we've got to inverse that selection. So Command Shift I, and that'd be Control Shift I on Windows. And we're just going to paint now around those forward facing areas. Give us a little bit of rim. Don't go under here because that'll be in shadow. Pick it up here a little bit. 
atmosphere, the light would be hitting those parts. And maybe the top of her head might be getting a little bit of light and the front part of her arm will also be receiving some light. And let's just do the hand. Hit Control D to turn that off. And maybe we're just gonna go around the hand a little bit more because it just gives that nice kind of, just looks good. And a little bit more in the head. So we can just do a little freehand adjustment here and areas that we feel like we're gonna need it. Like maybe on the arm there, maybe a little bit there. And now what we're gonna do is just go in here and we're just gonna blur this a little bit just so we get a better rim. So we're gonna choose Filter, Blur, and we're gonna choose our Gaussian Blur. And notice what we can do here. We can just play around with how much we wanna soften that edge. There we go. And then if we look at that before and after, and let's show you what I've done with the mask before and after. See what we're doing there? We're just building that little bit of a rim to make it look good. Now the other thing you could do is just add a little shadow on the back there if you really wanted to go crazy. Why don't we do that just for fun. We're painting with black as our foreground color. And all we need to do is just put a little bit there, I'm gonna put it all the way up to there and then just blur it. This is on a new layer of course. So I'm gonna give this a Gaussian blur just to kind of soften those edges. Looking good. Normally I change these to multiply blend mode and then just drop the opacity down just a little bit. And then we'll create a mask and just clean up those edges with white. All right, we're almost there. Finally, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take this here. So let's pull this up into the corner a little bit. There we go. Drop the opacity down just a little bit. And here's another thing we're gonna to do to add a little bit more sun. We're gonna go there, we're gonna grab a brush. And what I wanna do is grab a big brush. It's almost white, but a little bit of, just a little touch of that yellowy orange in there. Yeah, that's looking good. Create a new layer for it. Just make it nice and big, like humongously big. And just we're going to just tap there on the edge. See that? That's just letting a little bit of that kind of glow kind of come through, a little bit of that hot spot. All right, we're almost there. What we're going to do is we're going to pull it all together now with a curves adjustment I'm going to put on top. Let's give it a little contrast. So we're going to pull it down a little bit. And we're going to pop our highlights nice and bright. Kind of very contrasty scene like what you would see around a sunset time. Now we can play around with the colors. So what we want to do is probably hit the reds a little bit here and we're going to put a little bit more into our highlights. Warm those up just a little bit, not too much. And maybe pull it down a little bit in the shadows. And then we're going to do the blues. We're going to boost the blues a little bit in the shadows and remove them a little bit in the highlights. And we could also just play around the greens a little bit to get the right color. So we're just gonna kind of play around with these three until we get the right kind of color. All the pieces are together, but it's not quite looking realistic yet. And that's because now we need to go through and do some fine tune adjustments. So first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna grab hue saturation on the top because it feels a little too yellow. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it just a little bit more into the oranges. That's looking good. Now notice our light rays here are just too bright. So what I want to do is go down here and I'm going to change both on the sunspot there and also the light rays. I'm going to change the blend mode to maybe like a soft light. See how that looks? Hmm. Let's go for hard light. There we go. That's better. And drop that opacity down a little bit. We're going to do the same thing with the rays. Let's go to a hard light and drop that opacity down. So it just kind of blends in. It's a little more natural. It's not so obvious. All right, so our sky is kind of looking good. You could select both of these layers too if you wanted. Um, and then just hit Control E or Command E to merge them together. And we could add a further blur on there if we wanted. And this will give us a little bit more realism. See what we're doing there. And it just creates just a little bit more of a natural kind of a sunburst there. 
Um, so these are the kind of things you can do on your own, just experimenting. Now this is not bad, but our subject is too saturated and uh, just not looking right. So notice we created these layers. We're going to click on the hue saturation. The first thing we want to do is bring that saturation down. I think about there looks about right. And then we're going to lower the lightness, just make it a little darker, put it into shadow. So we've still got those forward faces there uh, receiving that light or that sun, because if you remember what it looked like, just flat like that. We've created that dimension there. And uh, let's have a look at this. We've got our before image. And there's our after image. And that's it. That's how we take a regular photograph and we turn it into a beautiful sunset. Now I'm curious, what's your favorite time of the day to shoot? Let me know in the comments. Do you like to shoot? Are you a morning person? You get up early? Or are you someone that likes to you know, stay out into the nice warm evening and do shots? Or do you shoot at night or the middle of the day? Let me know in the comments underneath. So anyway, um, if you do make your own photographs, consider becoming a contributor on Adobe Stock. I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can sign up, become a contributor, it's very easy, and you'll get your photo in front of millions of people and make some extra revenue. Also, don't forget the link there for the 10 free images. So if you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust and tell your friends about it. Add a comment, let me know what you'd like to learn next time. And until then, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.